In today's video, I will be explaining how to create and edit vector data in ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro. Vector data are defined by vertices and are either lines, polygons, or points. Vector data of the same geometric type are stored in a feature class or a shape file. While ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro have similar editing processes, there is one main difference. To create or edit a feature in ArcMap, editing sessions must be explicitly started and stopped. In comparison, ArcGIS Pro automatically starts and stops an edit session when a feature class or shapefile has been modified, or when edits have been saved. The first thing I need to do is create a feature class or shapefile. To do this, I need to access the View tab and then click the Catalog Pane button. If I want to create a shapefile, I need to find and right-click on my project folder, selecting New and then Shapefile. Alternatively, if I want to create a feature class, I need to navigate to my project and then right-click on my geodatabase folder. Select New and then click Feature Class. Another window will appear and from here I will assign an appropriate name and a geometric type to my feature class. Aside from the three most common geometries, which are polygons, lines and points, depending on your ArcGIS license you may also have access to annotations, dimensions, multi-point and multi-part types. These are all variations of the three most common types. Multiple features and types of features can be linked to the same attribute field. These are the multi-point or multi-part features. For this tutorial, I will be creating a polygon feature class. After assigning this basic information, I have the option of clicking Next. This will allow me to set a spatial reference and define the attribute table. Within the attribute table, if you want to create a field, which is a column, you must select a data type. This will set the type of information you can place in that field. There are quite a few different types, however text, date, and short or long integer can cover the most common and basic uses. Float and double are also very useful. If you require the attribute field to hold integers, then you can define the short, long, float, or double data types, whereas if you require decimals, you must define float or double. You can define these attributes now, but I will do this later on. There are other settings that can be defined, however the defaults are usually accepted. To check this class has been created, I can open my geodatabase folder. If the feature class has not yet been added to your table of contents, you can do this now by dragging and dropping it in. In ArcMap, the process of creating a feature class or shapefile is also done from the catalogue window. The processes are exactly the same. In ArcGIS Pro, creating and editing a feature is all done from the Edit tab. From here, I can select the Create Feature button, which will open another window. This is where I can see any of the layers I have just created, and you'll notice that a row of shapes appears right below it. These are used to draw polygons. For now, I will select the first polygon shape and begin to click and draw. You can add as many vertices as you wish and complete your polygon by double-clicking on your final point. I will create a couple more polygons now, but make sure to save your edits frequently. Another extremely useful shape to use while creating a polygon is the autocomplete tool. This will allow you to draw a polygon, aligning it perfectly to an existing edge. You can either use the existing vertices or you can click within the polygon itself. If you decide you don't want the polygon you have just created, you can discard your edits, or you can select a polygon and right click to delete. The undo and redo buttons are also particularly useful while creating and editing features. While you can create a feature on a blank map, it can also be useful to digitize features from a base layer or a georeferenced image. In this example, I want to draw some of the infrastructure on my image. You'll notice as I'm creating my polygons, an additional editing toolbar at the bottom of my display has appeared. These provide extra tools to better match the image beneath. The trace tool is useful for tracing existing polygons, allowing for a perfect alignment of edges and vertices. All these tools are also very helpful for creating curved or angled line features, such as contours or roads. Once I have created a few features, it can be helpful to remove the fill from the polygons so as to better see the image I'm tracing. It is important to note that you cannot change the geometry type, i.e. a polygon or a line or a point, once the feature class or shape file has been created. If you want to create any different types of features, you will first need to make a separate feature class. In ArcMap, the tools used to create and edit features are stored in the Editor and the Advanced Editing Toolbar. 
You can add these by right clicking on the grey panel next to the existing tools or through the customize and then the toolbar button. For now I will only select the editor toolbar but later on I will also touch upon the advanced one. To create a feature for this class I will first select the start editing option from the drop down menu on the editor toolbar. This should open a Create Features window. As in ArcGIS Pro, I need to click on my feature and then its corresponding geometric type. Because I will be creating a polygon feature, I need to select an appropriate tool from the Editor toolbar. To start, I recommend selecting the Straight Segment tool to trace my desired shape. Just as in ArcGIS Pro, a polygon is completed by double-clicking the final point. I can continue to make polygons, saving my edits as I go from the drop-down menu. Unlike in ArcGIS Pro, to complete any actions other than creating or editing polygons, I first need to stop this edit session. This is easily done through the drop-down menu. If I want to pick up where I left off, I only need to select Start Editing to begin again. Editing or manipulating features is a key component of digitizing shapes, and ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap have a wide array of tools to do this. In ArcGIS Pro, these tools are stored in the Edit tab, and can be accessed from the Modify button or the drop-down tool menu. If I scroll through these now, you can see that there are a lot to choose from. However, familiarizing yourself with a few key ones can work just as well. Some examples which I recommend focusing on are these. Before selecting any tools, it can be useful to check that the snapping settings are turned on and any feature class you wish to edit is selected. First, click the snapping button and ensure the first five icons are selected. These will allow your cursor to snap to any endpoint, edge, vertices, intersections, or points. This is extremely useful when editing your existing features. Next, select the pencil icon or the list by editing button in the table of contents. From this section, you can select or deselect any feature classes you do not wish to be editable. This can be very useful when there are multiple classes and the chance of accidentally editing the wrong feature can be removed. A similar selection process is available under the List by Snapping button or Snapping icon in the Table of Contents. I will now go through several of the tools, starting with Edit Vertices. First, I will click on the Edit Vertices tool and then use the Select cursor to choose the polygon I wish to edit. This will cause my chosen polygon's edges and vertices to appear. I can now click and drag any areas of my polygon, reshaping my feature. Sometimes when a tool is chosen, an editing toolbar also appears at the bottom of my display. For example, from the Edit Vertices toolbar, I can select the Add or Delete button to add or remove any of my vertices. To save my changes and exit this tool, I can select the Finish button from the same toolbar. The Reshape tool allows additional shapes to be drawn onto existing polygons or reshape the path of a line. The only requirement for this tool is that two points must be within or on the polygon or line you are reshaping. To start, I will select the reshape tool and then click the feature I want to change. To extend a section of my polygon, I can click once anywhere within that feature, draw the additional section, and then double click within the same polygon to finish. You will notice that an additional section has joined onto my existing polygon, making it a single larger feature. This tool can also be used to cut out sections of my features. To do this, make sure your first and last point are outside of the polygon you are editing. If you want to reshape a line, unlike a polygon, you will only be able to add on a section, but this process is exactly the same. Merge is an extremely simple and effective tool. As before, I need to select the Merge tool followed by the features I want to edit. After this, I can click the Merge button. If you merge polygons that were previously touching, these will become a single feature. There will only be one border. On the other hand, if you select polygons that are apart, the polygons will remain separated, but will be represented as a single feature in the attribute table. The split tool works in the opposite way to merge. If you decide that a polygon or line would be better represented as separate features, you can divide them. As with all the others, click the tool and then select the feature you wish to edit. To cut a polygon, click on an edge or a vertex and then outline your desired boundary, double clicking on the final point. You will notice that a border has appeared where the line was drawn, thus creating two distinct polygons. The Generalize tool is useful for simplifying, smoothing or changing the density of any polygon or line, thus removing small unwanted deviations in a feature's edge. To do this, click the Generalize tool 
and select the polygon you will be editing. Tick any option you want, but for this tutorial I will be using the smooth option. Before you confirm this edit, you will be able to see what the smooth outline will look like, shown by the dark blue line on your screen. If you want to approve this edit, click Generalize at the bottom of the pop-up window. The Continue feature is also a simple but very effective tool. By choosing the Continue tool and then selecting a feature, the vertices of that polygon or line will appear. This tool allows me to extend my polygon by clicking on a particular vertex and continuing to draw a shape. As I double click my last point, you can see that the section I have just completed has become part of the original feature. Extend or Trim works as the name suggests and extends or trims a line to an existing boundary. This is a good tool for aligning your features, however, you should note that you can only extend or trim a straight line and this line must be perpendicular to a boundary, either a polygon or another line. Clip is an important tool for defining shapes and aligning boundaries. There are three key actions, discard, preserve and split, that are completed using this tool. You can also specify if you want this tool to apply only to your selected features or to all your editable ones. This can be done by checking the box at the bottom and setting your buffer zone. As you can see, I have several overlapping and intersecting polygons here. First, I will explain how to discard. I have selected the clip tool and now I need to select my input feature or the feature I will be using to clip my other. Next, I'm switching over to the target feature and selecting the polygon I want to be clipped. Making sure the discard option is selected, I can press the clip button. As you can see, my target feature has been clipped by my first polygon, discarding the intersection. Now I will work through the preserve action. As before, I have selected both my clipping and the target feature, and have selected the preserve option. As you can see, only my clipping feature and the intersection has remained, leaving behind two overlapping polygons. The last clip action is split. This preserves all components of both my selected polygons, those being the clipping and the target feature. But it does clip the target feature to create a new polygon from the intersections. The clipping feature will remain intact. A note of caution. Clip can edit any feature as long as the feature classes are saved in the same geodatabase or shapefiles are saved in the same folder. Because this tool has access to some or all of your work, you must be careful when selecting your features or ticking the clip all editable features because you may accidentally clip everything. This is when turning off any layers you do not want to be editable can be extremely useful. Nevertheless, clip is an important tool to align your features. Buffer is another very simple tool to use. Once you have selected your chosen polygon, line or point that you want to edit, adjust your buffer distance. If I click on the Show Preview button, you can see the extent that the tool will create. Click this button here and it will create an overlapping feature. The tools I have just described are key for making the most common edits, however you can see there are plenty more to choose from. Here is a description of some of the ones that are available. Feel free to pause the video now. In ArcMap, the edit tools are available from the Editor toolbar. If you wish to access more, you can add the Advanced Editing toolbar to your display. Some of the names may vary from ArcGIS Pro, however all the actions described before are available in ArcMap. Feel free to pause the video or screenshot the screen to identify any tools you may need, otherwise the process is the same as in ArcGIS Pro. As well as editing your features from the Modify window, you can also manipulate your features from the toolbox. The key difference when using tools from a toolbox is that any edit will be made to the entire feature class. There are many tools to choose from, but in this tutorial I will only be covering Smooth and Integrate. It should be noted that Smooth requires a standard or advanced license. Both tools are found via the Analysis tab, and then from the Tool window. If I want all the features in one of my classes to be smoothed, I can search for the Smooth Polygon or Line tool. I then need to select my chosen feature class and set an adequate smoothing tolerance. This will simply create an additional feature class with the smooth features. The Integrate tool assigns a common coordinate value to vertices that fall within my specified XY tolerance. Now that I have selected this tool, I need to select one or more of my feature classes. It's useful to know the exact measurement between the vertices I want to integrate, so as to prevent unwanted changes. I can do this by accessing the Measure tool from the Map tab and click two of my points. 
For this example, I will select my polygon feature class and set the tolerance to just greater than my measured distance. This will assign any vertices that are within those parameters the same coordinates. Beware that this tool does modify the input data, but it is especially good for aligning your various features. As you can see, my polygons have moved to share the same vertices. These tools are also available in ArcMap from the search menu. Now that I have created and edited some features, I can populate the attribute table and thus my features with information. To open an attribute table, right-click on a feature class. In ArcGIS, columns are called fields and rows are called records. To conduct any analysis on my features, I first need to associate data with my polygons or lines. To add my own fields, I can select the Add Field button. If this button is greyed out, then make sure you save your edits first. Next, I will be able to type in the name of my field and select its data type. The data type refers to the information you will be populating this field with, such as dates or text. Once this is done, you can save this revision and swap back to the attribute table. From here, I can begin to edit the individual records. It is also possible to populate the attributes from the Attribute button via the Edit tab. In ArcMap, the Attribute table is accessed and edited by right-clicking on a layer in the Table of Contents. There is another way to create features, which relies on filling out a layer's Attribute table and setting up the symbology first. This is referred to as creating a feature template. Subsequently, as features are created, the attribute table becomes automatically populated with the information that I specify in the beginning. To start, I have already created an empty feature class. In my case, I chose a polygon geometric type. Next, I need to access my layer's attribute table and create as many fields as I wish. If the Add button is greyed out, remember to save your edits. From here, I will type a name and set the data type of this field. Afterwards, remember to save your table and navigate to the Appearance tab, followed by the Symbology button. For this tutorial, I will select the Unique Values option. Next, I need to select my field from the drop-down menu and then click the Add Unlisted Values button. This will open another Symbology window, where I can begin to set and fill in the types of polygons I anticipate on creating. For this tutorial, I aim to create three different types, namely schools, parks and lakes. Once I am done, I can click OK. You will notice that these additional field types have appeared under my original layer in the table of contents. Next, I need to navigate to the Create Feature button via the Edit tab and simply select a polygon template to create. As described before, I will draw and complete my desired polygon shape, but this time when I'm done, I'll go to the Attribute table and you will see that the information I specified in the beginning has already been populated there. I will now do the same thing with my other templates. As you can see, each one has its own colour, which I set in the Symbology window at the start. Just to double check that my attributes have been populated correctly, I can return to the Attribute table and see that the fields and associated labels are there as I added them. I will now save my edits as I am now done creating and editing any of my features. I hope this video has been helpful and answered any questions you had regarding creating and editing features in ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro. Rather than manually digitizing features, try ColorScan to auto-digitize your geo-referenced images. ColorScan is an extension to ArcMap that interprets raster data and has a bunch of tools that will auto-trace, create raster grids, and calculate volumetrics. ColorScan can be downloaded for a 30-day free trial using the link in the description.